listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after show entertainment. Very good, The AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, and streaming live on Ustream. This is AfterBuzz TV for Terra Nova. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest Terra Nova news and gossip. If you'd like to buzz in on tonight's show, you can buzz us at 424-256-1729. That's 424-256-1729. And now, picking up where the show leaves off, and the buzz continues, it's After Buzz TV for Terra Nova. Welcome, welcome, guys. <laughs> how, how have you been? I'm good. I had fun last night. Did you? Where did you have fun <laughs> last night? With you. You don't Whoa. remember. I'm insulted. Oh, <laughs> yes, yes, indeed. I, um, for those of you who don't know what she's talking about, by the way, this is Kristen Carney. That's me. I have Gabby Loren. And of course, Kendra Cab Cabasel. Cabasel. I it's always difficult. wait for people to try it out, but where well, is that from? What's your background? My father is from the Congo, Central. Oh, African. awesome! Uh, Very cool. Literally African American. There you go. Very cool. Um, so last night we had a very successful event with After Buzz TV over at the John Lovitz Comedy Club for our Breaking Bad edition. Maria Menounos hosted it, and we had Aaron Paul, Dean Norris, and R.J. Mitt from the show there, and a lot of our After Buzzers were there. And we do want to thank the fans of Terra Nova that came out to support us. Uh, again, um, you know, the success of that event will lead to more events. Anyway, um, so yeah, very fun event. My boyfriend really liked it. He was he was talking during the show or during he was whispering quietly. I'm like, you're gonna get me fired. Be <laughs> quiet, fan, major fan, major of fan. Bad. He yeah. was like, if I haven't had this much fun in my whole life, so he I was liked like, it. you That's need to great. get out more. That's great. And uh, it was revealed uh, a lot of big, not spoilers, but a lot of fun. You know, all the actors that we had on the sh on our uh, podcast were amazing and yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah, but they were they're they're awesome. I mean, it's an awesome show, and and I it, to get those guys in was really really cool. You I know, it's funny. I've heard so many good things about that show, and I actually have never seen it until last night. Same I saw here. the finale of what the third <laughs> season, fourth, but, but yes. fourth. <laughs> and you know what? I thought it was amazing, and the shots. The videographers, the DP, they're amazing at what they do. And it's, you know, it's going to get me to actually start from the first season. So, yeah. kudos. And uh, it also had a quick plug on Extra today. Oh, nice. So, uh, awesome. Shout out to Extra yeah. TV. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and speaking of shows and cinematography, uh, I do just want to say, um, and speaking about Terra Nova, I felt the cinematography was a little bit different today in um, honor or recognition or whatever to complement the amnesia part of everyone. Um, you know, their confusion tonight. Yeah, definitely. You guys get that? Yeah. So yeah, where definitely. do you give us specific examples of what you thought they did differently during this episode? Um, we, they, They're kind of more handheld, and uh, I'll get more into this in our discussion about um, the commander, but when he approached Jim, there was a lot of that intercutting, and it, it was confusing But because most of the time when you cut back and forth, you're supposed mm -hmm. to cut um, one character on one side and the other, so it doesn't create a confusion as to right. what's going on. And uh, they kept switching sides, and I was like, wait, who's talking? Yeah, well, one of the things mm -hmm. I wrote down um, was confusion, just in general. Mm -hmm. I liked it. It, it kept me int very interested, and I did like the camera work because it felt just grittier. Mm -hmm. And that's what I like. Remember I was talking about So that. it wasn't clean cut. Was it, isn't that something in production? Don't we have terms when they break the rule? It's like, is it the 360 or? Yes, it is the 360 yeah, rule. See? There you go. Production <laughs> term right there, guys. Gold star. Um, so tonight, um, you know, there was there was no questions really going into it in terms of what was going to happen. We knew from the preview last week that that it was about uh, an am Alzheimer's amnesia type of disease, and uh, obviously that was the primary focus and uh, the catalyst of tonight. What did you guys think of the overall disease or where it came from, et cetera, et cetera? I know that. I have a feeling it had to do with one the bug that they showed in the beginning. It was the the green bug that that yeah. first guy that was in that lab was, was playing, playing around, around with. Yeah. with. And it was out. It wasn't in 
you know, a contained area. So I feel like they had a lot of things in glass cages mm-hmm. inside in the lab. And it was out. He was, like, playing around with it. It was a very weird scene, but it was the opening of the show. So I feel like that was symbolic of what was going on later on. Do we think that's going to come back at all? Do you think the disease is done? I think or so, think because it's back? he was outside also with that, like, cricket-looking, I don't know, green yeah. bug. So I feel like now it's out in the open. So I feel like that also might have had to do with it. Because he could have created whatever, you know, um, DNA that was he was trying to create um, in that bug. You never know. He could have created that insect. Yeah. And that's what Elizabeth mentioned, I think, that somebody had been playing around in the lab right. with some of the DNA. And so I think maybe that went towards the bug. Maybe he created the bug yeah. with the DNA. I don't know. Hmm. I forgot about the How was the, the disease spreading exactly? I don't know if I picked up on, like, how were they? Am I totally? I think it's just airborne. Uh, yeah, I feel like I have the really disease right now. I can't, <laughs> I'm like, what's happening? <laughs> they, I can't remember. Yeah. I don't think they quite mentioned it, did they? Yeah, I no. don't know. Uh, I felt like I was missing a lot in this episode. I felt like I was having a hard time following, and mm-hmm. I know I don't really feel well today. I'm like, am I yeah. not I'm feeling well, or am I just too, dumb? Like, no, I yeah. really couldn't figure out why. You guys, Malcolm I actually had symptoms of the disease, and he was with um, Dr. Shan or not Dr. Shan, Mr. Jimbo. Shannon, Jimbo, <laughs> the whole time. And Jim never got sick because he had a cold, but Jim would have seen if he got it from something. But it was de- I think it's airborne because he was with him the whole time. Okay, I've got a question. Sure. Do you think Elizabeth and Malcolm did anything together physically to both have the disease? Or just because they were working in the lab, they got the disease? Yeah, or do they we cut think that scene out. Do we think they did anything <laughs> together? I we established that Malcolm didn't have the disease. But he had symptoms of it. He had symptoms of it. I didn't think he did in the beginning. I really, I still to this point don't think he had the disease when he first tried to kiss um, Elizabeth yeah. in the lab. But then I think maybe later on he started to get symptoms. But he had it and then he regressed back to not having it. So yeah. I was like, okay, this guy's full of it. <laughs> you know what but I mean? He yeah, he could have been putting it on so that he could right. make out with her. Exa- that's what I thought. But then eventually he went crazy, I saw. So I totally do the same I thing. I think he got it after. But that first moment, I don't think he really had the disease. I don't know. I don't he- think so. I don't think he had it either because, um, you know, the look that he gave to Jim... When Jim confronted him about him, hey, you remember what time period you're in? You remember that. Mm-hmm. Um, so and and Malcolm had the look in his eyes, like, yeah, okay, I had pushed it too far. So now, how about this? If you were with somebody mm-hmm. and you went to Terra Nova, right? You're married, but you also had dated this other guy that shows up, or a female. Would you ever make a move on somebody's wife or husband, even like a past flame? Knowing that they're there, would you ever do that? Is that something you would do? Do you no. have respect for the other person? <laughs> no. Yeah, I have respect for it. I wouldn't do it. I don't know what you, about you guys. Bill. I don't know. It's a tough question. Bill. Go it can get no. lonely. No it can get lonely in Terra Okay, Nova. I have a better, better question. Have you done it? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've gone back millions of years. The hardest part would be going in on the wife and not going back. Mil- that easy part's going back millions of years. Yeah, now at this of course. Point. The hard part's actually going for the for, <laughs> for the gold, the wife. Well, the gold is what I'm mainly getting at. Would you go for the gold? No. no. <laughs> good. We're all good people in yeah, here. No, yeah, no, I wouldn't. Cheers. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> well, what is it? Um, I w- we'll talk more about um the spy or um whatever we want to call him. But um, in talking about this disease, do we think? the bartender had anything to do with creating this disease i think there's a possibility i don't think so i think he's going to be more central with this with i think he's going to have his own Mm -hmm. line his own storyline yeah yeah. well i mean the kind of encouraging thing about this episode was you know um kind of last episode we were down on it it were veered away very much from the first episode nothing we um I know you especially thought it didn't quite tie in, but now we're seeing a lot of the things that, you know, the first episode presented and the second episode, you know, now they're mm-hmm. continuing on. And so, so I like it. So, um, it, I, I, he may have something to do with it, you know, but we just didn't see it or whatever. I think and when my- he was with the Sixers, he actually mentioned something or the woman mentioned something about. A disease, didn't she say something? By the way, could we? I mean, you guys have to speak to the fact that you guys couldn't, I couldn't either, um, understand half the <laughs> stuff at least. 
he said, yes. and then who was there anybody else on the list that we couldn't understand? It was tonight? mainly the bartender. The bartender. He well, spoke yeah. gibberish. Yeah. I mean, Elizabeth language. has an English accent, but I'm I'm used to I'm used to the Indian woman with, with English accents at this point. I think this episode needed subtitles. That's all right. I have to say. It was like watching bartender. a bad episode of the Jersey Shore. It was cheers. Don't understand what they're saying. It was cheers <laughs> from millions of years ago. So yeah, <laughs> no, I, mean, I, I, I I couldn't really understand him. I just I just that's weird. They didn't tell him to kind of tone it down. Yeah, a I mean it's bit. a because it's that you have to know in this kind of show you need to know all the details to be exactly. able to follow. So I felt like I was a little bit left behind because I don't speak Australian. And you know what was the, the 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 weird part is if you know if we're gonna nitpick this, it was just the fact that you know we re re wound it twice. Um, <laughs> I and think it, it was it, more it, than we rewind it. You just said right. Yes, <laughs> and uh, so. You know, usually, like, if you miss something, you can do that, and you kind of get it. You're like, oh, okay, that's what he said. Th no. <laughs> yeah, no. No. I think if we were around it th a thousand times, we wouldn't have understood it. Yeah, I don't... By the way, guys, this scene was the scene when the bartender was behind the bar speaking to Sky and Josh. Yeah. Yes. So, just to clarify, the bartender was speaking, and... And we, we will certainly understand. get into all of that. Um, <laughs> but, uh, so, again, uh, you know, maybe necessarily predict this. I don't think it was a big prediction or whatever. And I'm, you guys, you know, had your thoughts on it as well. Um, you know, that Malcolm, as you call the Malcolm in the middle, and mm -hmm. yes, he still continues to be, that he's kind of, he's in the middle of Jim and Elizabeth's relationship. Uh, but in some ways, I like how in this episode, he's also bringing them together. Mm -hmm. uh, your thoughts on that? On Jim and Malcolm? I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, the... the the role he's playing and his, you know, the kind of plot of tonight with him in it. Which one, though? Malcolm, you're talking about Malcolm and Jim okay. and Elizabeth, yes. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's an ongoing love triangle and... Love square. Well, triangle. The square was... Uh, yeah, who's Sky, that for? Jo Are we talking about Sky and... Josh? Oh, I would... No, yeah, you're right. You're right. I was yeah. jumping <laughs> in on the joke. I <laughs> Save it for later. Sorry, guys. <laughs> we'll get back to the love square. But <laughs> um, yeah, Jim, Elizabeth, Malcolm... Um, I think Malcolm keeps trying to get in where he tries to fit in, but I don't think it's working. Um, and But you can kind of see that Elizabeth does have remnants of feelings for him. Yes, mm -hmm. I, I see it. Yeah. Well, y you know, m I pre predicted that last week, you know, Malcolm was the guy who was in communication with the Sixers. And is it kind of a letdown? I mean, is his only role to be a catalyst against Jim and Elizabeth, or is there a deeper role than he has to play i think I, it'll get deeper yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah and not only that but oh well okay actually yeah. i, I think he has a deeper role to play because <laughs> are, can anyone ever really be that much in love to like go through that much of an effort to get a woman i just i i'm a little shallow i wouldn't feel that deep enough i feel like he's got to have a second motivation that's because he's love, crazy love can't go that deep he's not Wait, normal i'm sad though. i'm depressed you say malcolm malcolm, malcolm yeah about? yeah I'm saying he's got to have something, another like an thing, because yeah, because I mean, you know, guys want to, you know, get it in or whatever, but they also, you know, I think he can find other women for that too. I, so I think um, he's got to have something else going on. Maybe not on Terra Nova then. Uh, <laughs> I, don't <know. laughs> I don't know. I could see, I could totally see an, an ulterior motive with that, yeah. where he's maybe the bad guy and maybe he wants to take Dr. Shannon down so he can't help Terra Nova or something. You never know. He just, yeah. he's so, he just to me seems so slimy. Kind of that he's well, you know what? Else. Um, I just thought oh, of no. this. Um, it, both episodes, Malcolm and Elizabeth, have been kind of central, obviously, to restoring the peace, as it were. And you know, maybe he's trying to get Elizabeth on his side so that he can join the Sixers, and then you know, together they can start um, a <laughs> chemical warfare or something against Terra Nova to bring it down. Or maybe their Thoughts? own their own colony. Maybe they're not even going to join the Sixers, and they're going to do their own thing. Like, let's take over Terra Nova because maybe there's something secretive to Terra Nova where there's, like, gold on the island. I mean, I'm just going out there. But there could be something to the island that's special that everyone wants, mm -hmm. maybe. Yeah. And maybe he wants to get that, so he's going to recruit her to join a force with him to get the special parts or features of Terra Nova. <laughs> I don't know. Possibly. <laughs> I'm really going out there with that one, so. <laughs> yeah. Kind of I mean... Are we forcing, uh, I guess the follow-up question is, are we forcing this kind of opinion onto it, um, or is it just more of like a relationship type of show? You know what I mean? Because I, I know we have, when we come in from watching the, the episode, we're like, okay, what do we talk about? 
And for me, in some sense, I want to talk about the mysteries and things like that. You know, I want to talk about the disease, but it's more of their relationships. You know, does that make sense? Yeah, I think the I think the I think they'll probably um, maybe do 60, 40, 60, 60 percent relationship, 40 mm-hmm. percent mystery. So um, I hope I hope they go a little bit more with beyond just relationships because we can watch soap operas for that. Yeah. So hopefully I, I don't know if they're going to. I really can't tell at this point. I'm you having know, a hard time reading it. I mean, I mean, for me, hopefully, I do think that there's some sort of a tie-in to them being the two scientists and, you know, him trying to get close with her. Yeah. More and than yeah, and it did, if you saw how she reacted in the lab, she was like, oh, Malcolm. Like, yeah. so excited. <laughs> it was like, it's see. like, you know when you're dreaming and and you're dreaming something that you don't want anyone else to know you're dreaming and it's yeah. like, you know, that's, you're like, that's going to be when I talk in my sleep like i'm gonna be like being like oh sarah and i'm like i'm not a lesbian i swear you know like it's like one of those where like you don't want it to come out but it was like her you know just her inner inner being without having any sort of like um nervousness to show her feelings well but then again it was how many years ago right you know in her mind it was she was still in college but you can see that that's how she actually felt about him so you can actually see that at one point is it reminiscent of her first time seeing him in in last episode where she turned around, right? It was yeah, the equivalent of yeah. her turning around and being in shock because he was right there yeah, in her she, face. She definitely is excited about him. No, yeah, I think it wasn't she, like I haven't seen you in years. It yeah. was more like you're here and I don't know what's going on. I don't know in where I am. In this episode. And yeah, in this episode. And she was like relieved to see her then boyfriend who she was in love with. And you could totally tell the chemistry she had with him by, by how relieved she was that he was present in the room with her. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. But that's just because she hadn't met um, Jim yet. Yep, and that's then right. they had chemistry and hooked <laughs> up. <laughs> right, right. By the way, I will say, great line when he says to her, um, y- she's worried about what if we both forget, and he's like, you know what? My feelings go further than Deeper memory. Than memory. Yes. Yes. There yeah. you go. I also nice. like the that line to him, though, when he uh, the line that Jim used um, on Malcolm when he said, do you remember what year it is? Now remember, she's my wife or whatever. I like that yeah, line, that too. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. Um, well, speaking of relationships, I was uh, actually no. Before we get there, um, let's talk about uh, our commander going rogue. Was it kind of too comedic? Was it? Yeah, what did I it mean, re- I thought it was a little bit like hokey, a little bit cartoon or like a comic book style. That's just because his face is comic book. Style. It is kind of. <laughs> it is. God went comic style on that. Yes. <laughs> is it because we? C- um, for me, I just keep thinking of Avatar. Do you guys? Still picture him in that role. I mean, it's it's very reminiscent of yeah, that. Yeah, I do. It's so similar. It is. Yeah, it, I'm surprised they cast him as that because mm. I wouldn't. I mean, it's nice to be associated with a giant big movie, but I would, I would have maybe you know selected somebody that doesn't make you think of something else when you're watching. You want people to think of Terra Nova. Yeah, and and the tough part is again, it's just so. Um, Terra Nova for me is a combination of Avatar and Jurassic Park. Yeah, and uh, you know, in Avatar, he was the commanding officer. In this, he's the commanding officer, and so yeah. his role is, and you know what? If you substitute the dialogue, it's still pretty much the same. Yeah, just add some blue suits. Exactly. So, um, so, so Malcolm and Elizabeth put, the, put their tails together instead of, right? What's that? I didn't. Oh, come on. It's an avatar. <laughs> avatar. They put their tails together oh, okay. like, when they're like in love. <laughs> so if they. Do you have any sound effects for like my bad one liners? Like yeah, Please, like, get some. not a drum. <laughs> <laughs> just crickets. Oh, you can just do that. Yeah, crickets, crickets. <laughs> but, crickets. And Cricket. but I guess in some sense he did offer um some comedic relief in the episode. Do you think they meant it though? Was it intentional or did it just come across that way because they really weren't getting it right? I mean, I think definitely by the end they definitely meant it. Um, when you know he turns to uh, I forget his um the woman's name, but he says you know did you shoot me? And he says yes, and she's oh, yeah. and then he says Good thank job. you. Yeah, oh, the yeah. lieutenant. But I That's it. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Right, at least we know what rank she is. <laughs> yeah, she's pretty high up there, you know. <laughs> Female in charge, twenty one forty nine. Hey. <laughs> she wears a lot of eye makeup for a lieutenant. Got to look good in Terra Nova. You do. You do. You Where do, do they get their makeup? Want to turn on those dinosaurs? <laughs> Probably not. I know. They the make it out of rocks. The they grind down market. the market. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. <laughs> I know. That's funny. Flea market. Anyone else? No. <laughs> right. What is that? Crickets? A song? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Fail. It's a YouTube video. It's a crazy. <laughs> flea market. Montgomery. You can find me at the market. I'm talking about flea market. Who sings that? 
a, a local commercial guy. He's hilarious. L- yeah. YouTube it, everybody who's watching, please. It's hilarious. So it's Montgomery. Just YouTube Montgomery. Montgomery Flea Market. There you go. Anyway. <laughs> All right. It's so not as good as Terra Nova, though. It is certainly not. Um, well, speaking of stuff to YouTube, sorry to go off tangent. Uh, you guys should check out last week's episode of South Park. They spoofed Terra Nova, and it was pretty funny. Oh, did they? Really? It was oh. pretty funny. Missed that. Jess, in our clips. special segment, we, you should try to find that if you can. That, that might be a hard one to find, but if if you can just find that clip, it's literally like probably more like ten seconds, but it's quite funny. That's so funny. I love how South Park makes fun of like all the. I think it's an yeah. honor to be like yeah. spoofed, spoofed by South yeah. Park. Yeah, you yeah. Know? yeah. then you yeah. know you made it. You <laughs> did good. Well, they spoofed um that song I was just singing on Family Guy or not Family Guy, but um. We don't guy. talk about Family Guy. I don't like Family Guy. You don't like Family you Guy. Don't like family South guy? Park hates Family Guy, therefore oh, I hate Oh, okay, you're a South Parker. Composition, yeah, yeah. but I feel yeah. like most of the same people like both, so. Yeah. Yes! There you go. I could literally dance to this all night. <laughs> oh, I know which one you're talking about. <laughs> when I dream, like now, this is going to come out in my dreams. I'm like, no, I swear I'm not thinking about that YouTube <laughs> video again. <laughs> all right. Um. So, the, so kind of the big, big reveal at the end of this episode um happens with our bartender but um the catalyst for that i totally guessed this wrong i really wanted sky and josh to end up kind of together i i I? you know i know it's kind of the more typical thing but go ahead speak to it no i initially wanted that too i I think i mentioned it to both of you girls um in the first episode it seemed like that's the direction it was going in and even in this episode i think she tried to make her move and and then played the whole I understand card. <laughs> Who says it's not going to happen? Well, it might turn it will. around. They got a lot of episodes yeah. to go. They do. Yeah, I know. But she, it. Sky offered to help Josh find Kara. She said she knew a guy who turned out to be the well, bartender. Anyone's predictions on that? I don't think they're going to find her. And then I think that's going to lead Sky and Josh together. But then Sky's going to have mm-hmm. to always know she was a second but, choice. But, but what's Sky's intention with this? Let me ask yeah, you this, girls. True. It's not like. Know. To get to help the Sixers. I think she's a Sixer. I'm not kidding, because how did she know that this guy has connections like that? Seriously. She, yeah, seems, she seems to know all the tricks. On well, the she rock. is on that side, and she knew about the signs on the rock. You know, she. Yeah. I'm telling you, Sky is bad. But Do you think her name has any meaning? Sky, like she kind of over, overlooks everything. I'm getting into it, like how you read symbolism? things. Symbolism? Yeah. I mean. English it, class. It's, <laughs> it's definitely a possibility. Um, you know, I don't know what symbolism Jim... Well, I guess Malcolm <laughs> ha- is symbolic of Malcolm in the middle. Um, I don't. Yeah, I could buy that. Sure. Why I not? think Jim could actually also kind of. Jim is kind of a, you know, an average name, average mm-hmm. Joe kind of name, yep. and, and so I think he's kind of being treated like you know, like at the beginning him being in prison and now um, having issues with his marriage. I think he's just kind of like an average. They want him to be the average, like an average guy. Now, mm-hmm. if it was a Mike, it would be a different story. What's a Mike? <laughs> is Michael know, Jordan? Think, no, well, Michael uh. is such a popular name. Don't you feel like you know like 10 mics? Yeah. Like if I show you, like no pun intended, if I show you my phone right now, I have like No, I do too. No, I do phone. too. You're just right? a hoe, that's why. No, <laughs> I'm telling you. No, but seriously, I know so many mics. I feel like every other person, yeah. it's like a statistic, like seven out of like eight people are Mike. Yeah. I literally you also know? have like 20 mics on my phone. No joke. I do too. Now let me ask you this though, girls. <laughs> really? <laughs> Not like that. Not like that. Um, let me ask you this though. It's it's no small feat for Sky to say, you know what? I'm gonna help you get the girl back from you know the future. It's not like, you know, you're at a bar and you like a guy, and he's like, yeah, sorry, I'm already taken. You know what I mean? You're like you, she's now actively pursuing to get that person here for his happiness. Yeah. yeah. Is that but, how crazy well, is that's that? Why that's why I'm kind of questioning her motive right. because it doesn't seem like anyone would be that altruistic in a state that they're in, you mm-hmm. know, like where they all have to fend for themselves. Yeah. And she's completely she- trying to get with him. You know, the whole time she's flirting with him, going alone with him places like the friend zone, really? She I al- don't think so. She, she has uh-huh. ulterior motives. I agree with you. And she also offered to buy him the guitar. Uh, she's trying to like woo him. Like, yeah, you know, she's like a predator, him the man a predator role. does like, that. He, she's going to be raping him. Soon. And this may it's be a, a way sign. to win his heart to, you know, offer by getting the girl that gr- that Josh likes well, dangling it in front, you know, kind of like a carrot. Well, you I think I, mean? I, I, I agree with Kendra, because if I had a guy that I had left, you know, in mm-hmm. the past or the future or whatever, um, <laughs> and the new man interest offered to find him, that's romantic. Yeah. You know, it kind of shows like it shows like so. caring. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> definitely romantic. It's it shows how caring yeah. and like. He, and 
you know, it's like he's like selfless. a selfless. Yeah. Being selfless. And and yeah. in in doing so, I think she's trying to win him over. Yeah, I think so. Because she no, knows would that you ever do that for someone you are interested in? Oh yeah, let's bring your ex girl. Yeah, I would here. because I'm yeah. a good person and you're clearly not. Kristen, <laughs> no, you okay? Would you do that right now with your boyfriend? Let's bring your ex. Yeah, because I love him. No, I would do whatever him, he so wanted me to do. I think, I think if the you edge, love someone, set them free. The edge. See? No. Uh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank let you me very let me much. ask this then. Um. Could it be a possibility that she's trying to get the girl here, and uh, I forget and what the full quali- the qualifications are that you have to be invited, obviously, and you have to serve some sort of purpose. Um, so could it be found that you know this girl really doesn't serve a purpose, and she's not good or whatever, and she she gets disqualified from going to Terra Nova, and that could be the the make or break for Josh, and he's like, you know what? Maybe this relationship wasn't going anywhere, and she's actually a bad person. I'm going to go with Sky. Exactly. Yeah. That's and what we were Sky, thinking. Sky may know all of this information. So she's yeah, not she's altruistic. Kinda... She's just a sneaky little bitch. No, that's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. I, no, I'm saying I don't think she's altruistic. Mm-hmm. I'm saying that she's doing it with the motivation that she knows he's going to come to her because what she's doing for him is nice. Mm-hmm. I'm just no, calling myself altruistic. You guys, Sky's yeah. not that nice. She has ulterior motives, and I will put money down on this. All right, I well, bet you well all. we definitely have to talk yeah, about the bartender. I think we're like all miscommunicating because I think Just we like agree with you, but also you know, Sky's of... dating the bartender. That's what it is. <laughs> Ooh, creepy old man. She is. What what accent does the bartender have? Australian. That's not Australian. New Zealand, no, yeah. It can't it be. Was like, We'd still need. I mean, listen, I we know. have some Australian hosts, Paul Ashton. If you uh, speaking of Breaking Bad. Um, you know, listen to him. Oh yeah. Speak. He he opened up the show along with the rest of the hosts, and he is a true Australian. Mm -hmm. I can understand every word that guy says. Yeah, but some have heavier accents than others. Different dialects. I I I lived in Australia for a while. I would definitely say. But you didn't understand it. I didn't understand Uh, one line. I understood all the other lines. Well, so did we. (laughs) He's wearing a Hawaiian shirt. By the way, Jesse, can we? Can we check on IMDb yeah. to see if anyone figured out what the hell this guy said? Just like search bartender, like Sixers or something, like yeah. Um, and that's that, that's kind of the uh, the hard thing about doing this show is that we go up right after, and so it's very hard to yeah. kind of research and all of that. I mean, we did rewind a bunch of times, and again, mm-hmm. we just couldn't. So <laughs> yeah. we'll definitely have the answer next week, hopefully. Yeah. If yeah. our fans got it, <laughs> I have a lot of hope for fans out there because I. <laughs> We four people did not <laughs> oh. get it. Four, yeah. people four people, one that brain. Are deaf. We can't one brain. Yeah, we <laughs> four people, one brain. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I mean, did you did you guys know right off the bat that you know he was possibly a sixer or no? The bartender. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I just assume all b- think, bartenders are yeah, bad. You go in kind of, you know, they thinking shady thoughts about each person, each new person that. Comes but he's in. actually. For me, he's actually quite a nice guy. Can I ask a question? Go ahead. You just mentioned that in to enable to get into Terra Nova, you have to serve some purpose. Like, what What's purpose does a bartender serve? Getting people drunk? Well, no, he had other tasks he was doing, right? With the the Sixers in the woods. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah but they don't want to know about they, that. Yeah. They don't. They don't know about that. Terra Nova. I'm just kind of being a wise guy about it. Yeah. Clearly, they so want to be drinking in so Terra Nova. Like, is what I'm saying. Why would they bring? Why would they choose him to come? Like, what was his purpose to come? Like, how did he get there? Is not really a qualification right. to come to Terra Nova. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. But you know I'm what? Just, Maybe you need to fill every quota. We're like apologizing gender. to all bartenders out there. Like, you're not all losers, but most of you are. No, you're just actors. Come on. No, but I think actually, I have a feeling that. It's not that he's a sixer. I just feel like it's kind of like with Breaking Bad. He's doing a side job. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Maybe I think he's whatever was in that suitcase of his or like luggage bag. He's trying to make money off something, I think, or make connections for something. Like Mm -hmm. he has a motive for whatever he wants. So I think he's kind of playing both ends. Could his qualification be street smarts or shadiness? Is that a possibility? Yeah, in my book. Yes. You mean that's why they recruit, recruited him? Yeah, like, oh, is that know. a possibility? I think maybe for yeah. the Sixers, yeah. I don't know for people. Terra Nova. Yeah. I think we need to make it feel like home. We need some creepos. No, because he yeah. even said, like, keep your enemies close, or, like, he's keeping Josh close because it's his enemy, and I think that he's kind of right now with the Sixers because he's doing business with them, but mm-hmm. I don't think Terra Nova brought him there for shady purposes. I feel no, like Terra Nova brought him there for an, a good reason, yeah. and he's being shady. To get the good that's people right. of Terra Nova drunk. So we, with Edgar. so he's a, they're off they're after um Jim specifically 
you know, the new sheriff or whatever they refer to him as. So why him? What threat does Jim Because he's protecting Terra Nova and they don't want him to, they want to take over. So and you can tell he's all, he's good. You can yeah. tell he's, he's like, he represents a Genuinely. wholeness or something. And I think they don't, for whatever reason, want that. I think they can see into him because he seems vulnerable because although he's strong, he's a very um, like sweet, genuine person. And I think that they, people prey on that kind of weakness. So I think mm -hmm. that that may, may be one reason. Mm -hmm. Could be. I just know that because I was picked on in high school, and I'm a good person. <laughs> See, Kristen, they saw my weakness. Kristen went the high route. She learned from her experiences. You went the low route? No, I'm saying. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's why I'm on this show. No, I'm just kidding. No, but I feel like don't like, because some people, when they deal with things, they mm -hmm. take it. You can either kill people or you yeah, can be a good person. You, exactly. You can either go the wrong direction with anything in life. You know what I mean? If With any experience, you can either go in a good path or you can you know, take the high route or you could go in a very bad, dark place. <laughs> you know what I mean? I this has gotten about, you. you guys have all of a sudden turned into my therapist. Let's get back I to Terra Nova. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> no, but there's, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that deal with the same things. It's part of life, you know? But anyways, I get it. segue. <laughs> um, well, any last thoughts before we go into a commercial? And we do have a bunch of special fun segments. I know Gabby's been teasing me about some we stuff. Do. I don't want to. I don't want to reveal just. Oh my what god! It is, I'm but. so excited, you guys! I have a great special segment for you. But any last thoughts on this episode? I know we didn't really touch upon uh, Maddie's relationship, but um, if you guys have any th stuff about that or anything we might have missed, not really on Maddie. But did uh, did we finish talking about the disease and whether we think it's going to move forward or? No, what were your thoughts? Have, I mean, the vaccine seemed to have worked, but we didn't know if there were more of those bugs out there, if those are what were, you know, causing the disease, or if it's just kind of a segment, you know, an episode that'll just live on its own and keep moving. I don't know. I think these, for me, these kind of um, catalysts are self-contained within the episodes, but the uh, the things they stir up within the people mm -hmm. that will kind of carry and and be the plot line for the episodes. I don't know. I feel like the I think maybe in a, a future future episode this disease might come back or show itself again. But um, you know the teaser says a lot, so I would say that there's going to be some interesting things that happen next episode because. Uh, you see the Sixers, I think they said, like, a line, like, something, they want something that belongs to me or whatever. Well, we'll definitely get into so, more of that in predictions. Yeah, somebody yeah. in Terra Nova has something that the Sixers want, clearly. Ammo? Could it be ammo? That's I think besides <laughs> yeah. that, there's something on the ground, I think. I think there's something over there. Well, we know it's been, uh, uh, I guess, fertilized, or how would we yeah, say Yeah, the dino eggs. baby The dino eggs. E baby yeah. eggs of mm -hmm. last week. We know that. There's apparently some disease. Yeah. Mm. There's a lot to Terra Nova that we yeah, don't know yes. yet. Yeah. Kristen, any last thoughts? No. <laughs> All right, Jesse, take us to a commercial. Want to find out what the after buzz is about? Janice is a drama queen. This yes. is the divide that is going to carry the series. Give us a call. 424-256-1729. 424-256-1729. This television, and they want it to be as dramatic as possible. I mean, it's and Shakespearean. I, you never know what goes on behind closed doors. Find out why After Buzz TV is the number one source for after show content. Now, in the eyes of Jimmy... Nucky is a villain. 424-256-1729. 424-256-1729. 424 I mean, who would you guys rather hear that from? Your husband or your best friend? <laughs> the, the wig! The wig no, will come no, out. Wig. When the TV show is over, get your after buzz on. You know what I will say? This show is missing a... This is breaking news from CNN. <laughs> there we go. Or Fox or whatever. <laughs> this fall to Fox CBS FX, Jurassic Park and Lost in the same TV show. <laughs> Dinosaur. <laughs> Lost human. <laughs> Future, yes. That was go. our <laughs> South Park. <laughs> <laughs> Mockery. Was that? that was the that South was Park episode. Yes. Oh. Uh, it's it, For those of you who just saw that and have no idea what the context was, um, uh, one of the characters turned 10. And uh, you know how people get cynical and they're like, oh, that that is... That uh, that movie sucks. That sucks. That that music sucks. So uh, one of the characters just thinks everything sucks, 
And so, therefore, that's an interpretation of Terra Nova. His name's it Kristen. Uh, What's that? I said the name's Kristen. Who? Oh, you're. Oh. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Got that joke. Took me a minute. That sound. Um, <laughs> for me, I was going to say also this. Um, we usually come back in with a theme song after our commercial of the show. And I think uh, Terra Nova is missing a, some really cool opportunity for a good theme song. Yeah. They intro. could have one of those heavy, like James Horner kind of like composed monumental star wars type yeah, songs that they right. are missing and yeah. you really you get when you hear a song like that like if i hear the star wars song like i get like kind of chills you know mm. so they i think to to catch people's eye they, they, they do need something like that all right well for for the time being we're gonna make uh south park's 10 minute clip <laughs> or 10 second clip the intro of <laughs> <laughs> I like but, uh, kendra i know did her research this week um, on what do we call it? The DL dinosaur. Yeah, the DL yeah. dinosaur. The yes. download dinosaur yep. of the week. Yep. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You'll be excited to know that this week's um, download dinosaur of the week was inspired by one of the three previously unknown dinosaur specimens that are actually on display in Paris as we speak. I see. Um, some of the and you were in London though. So did you get a chance to visit it? Well, I was in London, but these were in Paris. So, so you didn't go to Paris yeah. just for a day trip? Really close. I couldn't. I uh, mm. I was there for business. Shame. Well, bad. shame on you. You should have done after Buzz business going to the museum. Should have extended I could have chosen flight. another dinosaur. You guys are giving me a hard time. Anyways, all right, go ahead. And tell us. <laughs> so this week's dinosaur is called the Tenontosaurus. Oh, Excellent. There, there it is. There it is. It's uh, a medium to large ornith ornithopod. You can tell I can. I've been practicing, <laughs> um, which means bird feet. As you can see, it kind of has okay, yeah, somewhat um, of bird feet, uh, and it comes from 115 to 108 million years ago. If you can believe, it was between one and two tons in weight. Um, the first fossil was actually found in Bighorn County, Montana, which is kind of interesting. Wow, yeah, there you go. Don't think about that. Um, it was an herbivore, and it was considered a low browser. That's strange because yeah, it, it doesn't have a long neck. Yeah, yeah. it, it well, kind of looks like a mix between a um, uh, brontosaurus and a velociraptor. He definitely does not it. look like an herbivore. Yeah. He definitely looks like a carnivore. Yeah, well, and the maximum browsing height was nine feet. You said he looked like he has a long neck but on its oh no i mean leg. like a low neck he doesn't have a long neck oh, like the yeah, other yeah. herbivores oh have. yeah because yeah. most of them do have that are like top feeders so but on get. its hind legs it can reach nine feet so. oh that makes it's sense. still pretty short at least you can dunk yeah. a basket it's pretty short yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they can't go to the bushes right. the they'll just center. forget about the trees <laughs> yeah so that's the uh tenontosaurus can we all say it with me tenontosaurus <laughs> thank you yay a plus and we obviously don't see it in jurassic park three we found no. out our our DL dinosaur uh, of last week was actually I the main villain in Jurassic Park. <laughs> yeah, 3. but Jurassic Park three is on its like DL on its own. Yeah, that's you know? true. It's like I missed it. Last week. But again, we said la uh, the criticism of Jurassic Park three was that the dinosaur uh, villain was not a real creature, and we dispensed that myth. Yes, <laughs> I was looking for the word. Yeah, Thank I, you. Can <laughs> I can tell the way you're moving your mouth. <laughs> I'm like either these are sexual gestures or he can't think of the word. There Myth. you go. Now, Gabby, you also have a fun special segment. I do. Okay, guys. So recently I was on my iPhone and I was looking up iPhone apps and I went to the top 25 most popular free iPhone apps. And what came up? Talking Rex. Okay. <laughs> so I downloaded this. This was is, a, this is a picture of the iPhone app. This is the Rex. And basically you can say things to him and he'll repeat them. Okay, <laughs> and not only that, but like you can feed him meat, and he'll <laughs> grab it and and like it's like fetching, and he catches it in his mouth. And you can also throw him bones, and he could also fight another dinosaur. It's wow. like the funniest app I've ever seen. And me and Jesse Janity did some research right before the show, and we found the funniest clip that someone uploaded to YouTube of this app. <laughs> Is he saying Jew bag? <laughs> what is he Judas, saying? Judas, the Lady Gaga What's song. Saying? It's the Lady uh, Gaga song, Judas. Oh. He's singing. <laughs> oh, wow. You guys, come on. I would have not Nobody gotten that. Got that. It was like the bartender speaking. <laughs> I yeah, <laughs> we have to rewind that. You guys that's just don't understand English. Week. That's good. That's fantastic. I, I really hope uh, the people of Terra Nova are amused, you know, know. have these kind of apps. Oh, 
<laughs> we should make him say Terra Nova. No wonder we need a Terra Nova with apps like this. Oh Wait, my can God. we just play that that video one more time? Can we get that back up? On Listen to what I said, and you'll hear it. Okay, let's let's do it oh. one more time. Oh, oh that's no. us actually. Oh, actually, that's oh, oh my God. Oh, oh my God. The These are our get dinosaur poses. <laughs> I thought this was oh much God. more uh, uh, fierce than the uh, last dinosaur we saw. It is. Yeah, so unfortunately. These three dinosaurs are <laughs> reptiles you've never seen before. I'm guys. definitely a carnivore. For those of you just listening, um, we have a picture of the girls from last night's event. And uh, they are pretending to be dinosaurs in front of the <laughs> I'm actually just pretending that I didn't take my uh, mood to... I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> That's just me in the morning. Fair enough. Well, don't get near Kristen in the morning. <laughs> speaking of latest events, uh, why don't we hit up our news and gossip? After Buzz TV News. Well, I have to say that some people are telling me that some friends are telling me that um, word on the street is the ratings are going down on this show. No, it was the most uh, last week. It was it last stayed... week number one on iTunes, right? No, no, no. We're talking about the Terra Nova show. Oh. Yeah, not podcast, not us oh. guys. Come no, on. but it could. It's also on. Well, it was it, it retained the most viewers, so it didn't draw it from the season premiere to the second episode. It kept its numbers. Really? It did, yeah. Okay, good. Because I was getting worried because I was hearing some rumors that. Now the um here's the thing the numbers of the season premiere weren't as high as they expected. Right. However, um you know it was it was around eight or nine million. It was it was eight point seven I believe, and the second episode had about eight point six three. Just you know, as long as you're not dropping, that's a pretty good number. And I feel like especially with how much money they have invested in the show, mm -hmm. they'll continue to um they're not gonna pull it. And I've read articles that said Fox will not pull this for a while. That's good. You mean it, you think it's gonna go past the first season? Uh, it's definitely it'll definitely at least have the first season. That's good. But I, I I believe they said we're gonna we're gonna do at least two seasons of this. All right. So we have hope. We do. <laughs> we'll be back. That means. <laughs> Uh, I guess, did no one prepare our news and gossip? Well, I just said something, so you guys say something. I thought it was with the dinosaur. I thought the dinosaur. Oh, no, news and gossip is like statistics segment. and like, you know, what's the trends that's going on with our show right now. Well, but, I know um, that I saw um, uh, on YouTube, I watched a couple reviews on YouTube. Mm -hmm. They actually don't have many views. Um, one guy had a lot of, he had like 27,000 views or something of his review and uh, the rest were just like a hundred, a hundred, a hundred. So I and I really didn't see many results. So I don't, I don't know if that's. But ba we don't have much competition. Mm -hmm. oh. what I'm saying. How about <laughs> as far as like, you know, your friends and the people around you? Do they like this show? What do you? Like, I haven't heard anyone hearing? talk about it at all. I, I I have people that like it a lot. Um, to you know, again, it's not the most um, brilliant show ever written, but just for pure fun entertainment while still kind of having that, yeah. They Don't like these it. shows need need a strong fan base to to really get the buzz go? It's all word of mouth. As much advertising as you do, yeah. you know, it just create like with Breaking Bad, like everyone well, in this knows Twitter that show age, rocks. it's so weird, you know. Like especially like you go to a movie Friday night. Um, if people start tweeting bad about it, right. um, you know, you can have a great Friday night, and then all of a sudden Saturday, Sunday, you're done. Yeah. People really, the social media really just does have so much influence over how, the success of these. Whereas back in the day, you have to go off of <laughs> the advertisements. Right. And that's so. what I was going to ask, because I did listen to your podcast, um, mm -hmm. you know, the... Uh, when Kendra after, wasn't here right. last week. Right. <laughs> You're speaking in third person <laughs> <laughs> when Kendra wasn't here. But um, you spoke about the Facebook likes. Are there any more? Oh, week? yeah. Well, I've been noticing that it's just, it keeps growing. Yeah. So I think that's good. That's I mean, it's nowhere near like a million, which yeah. I mean, I think... Well, here's the, the thing, too. The People, um, you know, it, it's been explained to me in speaking about after buzz tv and uh you know that people like to see you grow you know initially for us it, it, when we first started like a year ago we were like we gotta have x amount of viewers mm -hmm. um and you know and it was like wait guys we literally just started this like it's okay that we have a thousand listeners in our first week that's actually a very good number mm -hmm. and then you know we've grown since um and people like to see us grow um and yeah, so it's you, like when you discover a band that no one you, really knows. You love that band when they're small. And then when, when they get big, you're like, oh, they're my band. Exactly. <laughs> and so speaking about that, let your friends know about After Buzz. Yeah. We yes. always, oh, that's all we asked. More eyes and ears. We're free to listen to, view, download, whatever you want. We're free. Yeah. We just asked for eyes and ears. Yeah. So a little celebrity gossip um, on the, for the show. 
at the CW premiere, fall premiere party, uh, Matt Rorig, who play, I mean, Zach Rorig, who plays Matt from Vampire Diaries, claims that this is his top show, and everyone he meets, he brags about it to try and get them to become a fan because he's found, like you guys, he asks his friends and nobody has seen it so he's getting people hooked yeah. and he said that this is his campaign to get people hooked on yeah. terror you know what yeah, we they need gotta... a celebrity endorsement or something chess you love vampire diaries um we should do like a uh two you know one week two show special for him where he does vampire diaries for us and he comes on and watches terra nova and you know does it with us well as looking from what he He's saying on this, trying to get people as fans, I definitely yeah. think he'd be down. Yeah, he'd be down. All right, that Actually, might be fun. I have something too. He's what got a got? Not celebrity diary. gossip, but um, apparently in episode two, those mm -hmm. flying reptiles we were talking about, those were actual. Um, those were actual. I don't know what the For word would be because I can't even pronounce this. Maybe you can. Um, right here, seagull-sized photosauruses. Yes, it looks like And it says they're they're long tailed ramphorid soy. <laughs> You're just gonna embarrass bonos, yourself. So yeah. Don't even try. I, I don't even know how to say it, but it's like an insanely long word. It looks like super califragil. But it's like it said they had gone instinct by the end of the Jurassic period, well over fifty million years before the action takes place. A pickled know. it says a pickled baby. Um it's yeah, I'm not gonna do it. Is it? It's really complicated, it's really actually. Maybe we'll talk about that one for the next show. I just show. don't know why it says Fair pickled enough. baby. Well, <laughs> speaking of next show. I wish I could, I like, could pronounce it. I love I pickles, but <laughs> I I Snooki's like, going to have a pickled baby. Well, need, like, that is our... <laughs> well, there you go. Right into predictions. <laughs> what are you looking at? Pickled baby comment? No, oh. I'm laughing at me. <laughs> Uh, I always forget the previews. Why do I always I forget? I forgot the, the preview too. I literally tried to write it down, but I'm I have a short term memory apparently. Uh, I'm gonna go to Kendra on this one. The preview? Yeah, what the was the next it? season? Yeah. Um, no, yeah. <laughs> the next episode? Or the, yeah. <laughs> yes. Next season. That's, that's <laughs> a lot to ask of me. Um, predictions for the next episode. Yes. I know, Gabby, you you checked out the preview. Yeah, yeah I she did. Be the preview I pro. We got to go to Gabby on this one. Yeah. Is Talk that a bad Gabby. thing? <laughs> no, that's a good thing. Apparently, no one else paid attention. I yeah, tried to. I else, come on. I was so excited when I saw it, but um, I just didn't write it down. And then I, it, it's a problem that I have. I never can remember these yeah. uh, previews. Well, I'll tell you that there was a little blonde girl walking through the forest, and they had mentioned that um, she was a runaway with a mysterious secret. So, what do we think this mysterious secret could be? Honestly, I, I have was absolutely no idea. <laughs> No, it was, no, a, it was, it was a, like, like a, a baby. Young it was like girl. a yeah, like a. You know what? I'm excited though because it kind of you know it it it's in keeping with kind of a Halloween theme. You know where it's like oh a little creepy girl. You know? <laughs> it's right in time yeah. for Halloween in two weeks. Maybe. <laughs> That's awesome. So no. she's not creepy scary. Halloween That's the only girl. thing. <laughs> she's so innocent. She could be scary. Who knows? Yeah, you never know. Do Maybe her celebrate? face will change or something. Or the, do they observe? Halloween? I know that I got from the preview, um, aside from the little girl um, being a Halloween costume, um, I got, it's Terranova what we think it is. Because they were talking about the Sixers said, you have what we want and you're hiding it or something mm -hmm. like that. And oh, so, and the war is going to be raged too. Right, right. Could so, be. right. So there's there's um, definitely some um, some stuff uh, boiling between the two parties, and I think we'll see um, that Terra Nova actually might have some uh, skeletons in its closet. Maybe it's hmm. oil for Halloween. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. What I, what I That's a good point, actually. There you go. Terra Nova is the new Middle East. It could be, and you know what? I do think um, you know as much as. A lot. We've been kind of talking about the relationship because that's what the plot's mainly been about. I feel like now, um, the fourth episode in, we're really going to start to see that develop and and externalize, you know, into the conflict between the Sixers and um, Terranovians. Yeah, so I'm excited. I still feel like everyone's a Terranovian. I don't know. Well, yeah. well, the am I still the only one in on that? Well, this I think that I think ter by Terra Nova, it's it's like within its walls. So like yes. when you're in the walls of the community, that's Terra Nova. When you step out the side. When you step outside of the walls, you're now you're fixer. well. Now you're just kind of out there. So I think that they have their own community mm -hmm. that we haven't seen yet. Yeah, I want to see. I want to see the Sixers civilization. I'm yeah, curious. They have to live somewhere. I mean, they're wearing clothes and things like that. They have to have <laughs> things being produced and you know, things like that. So that, I think they have their own little world we haven't seen yet. Well, as always, you can write us in um, at info at AfterBuzz TV. We do thank you for listening. On behalf of my co-host, go ahead. Uh, 
Any last plugs that you guys want to say? Yes. Well, I'll go first. So if you guys want to follow us, we'll definitely check us out every Monday for our after show for Terranova. But for me, my public page on Facebook would be www.facebook.com backslash Gabrielle Loren one. And that's like Sophia Loren. Got it? Good. <laughs> <laughs> you guys. Uh, if you guys want to follow me on Twitter, uh, I'd really appreciate it because I'm starting to get a little uh, frustrated on my follower count. Tweet us. Uh, so follow me. I mean, I have a thousand followers or something, so it's not like I'm a loser, but whatever. Um, I'd like more. So follow me at twitter.com. It's ex a very exclusive. Uh, <laughs> slash Kristen Carney. It's K-R-I-S-T-E-N-C-A-R-N-E-Y. And also, you guys, if you live in the L.A. area, on October 29th, <gasps> I'll be producing a show at the Hollywood Improv on Melrose um, at 8.30 on the 29th. So you guys should come out called Comedy Without a Cause. Sorry, I just have to interrupt for a second. You spelled my name wrong, DJ Jessity Janity. E-L-L-E. It is not Gabrielle. It's Gabrielle. <laughs> I'm a female. <laughs> two E's and two L's. Thank you. You're the best. No, actually, she's in drag right now. Yeah, I'm in drag. <laughs> I'm really a man. Sorry, guys. Good but yeah, so <laughs> my Facebook page would be two E's and two There L's. we go. We got it fixed. There we go. The fixed version. That is me. Thank you. Thanks. See, we like to play jokes on our host. Well, I was Kristen <laughs> Perry totally last week. Joke. See? <laughs> yeah. And uh, Kendra? Yeah, I'm waiting to see my spelling. Oh, There nice. we go. We got it right. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, you can follow me on Twitter. We'll get you next week. <laughs> 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 I'm watching. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> so my Twitter is at Kendra Cabasel, which is... K E N D R A K A B A S E L E, um, and that's the same uh, handle as my web address, my my website, KendraCabasel com. There you go, and uh, you can just follow After Buzz. <laughs> I tweet. Phil, for after come on. <laughs> no, you don't want to tweet with me. I suck. Tweet with you guys. You you know if you have uh, questions about the show or whatever, you know tweet with these guys. I'm sure they'll answer. And it. please you know, share your fun. opinions on on yes. us. If you like us, if you hate us. We want to know feedback. And I would say do it this way. Let us know how we can improve. We we yeah. like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? We we're, we're always evolving. So just letting us know how we can get better. Anyway, Jesse, take us out of here. I Jesse, say, don't we have to? Oh yeah, we have to do our sign out. We will. Okay. From producers Kevin Undergaro and Phil Svitek, engineer DJ Jesse Janity, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. If you have questions or comments, be sure to buzz us at info at AfterBuzzTV.com. And you can find us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter by searching for AfterBuzzTV. Buzz, buzz you later. later. Ow. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzzTV or its owners or principals.